Hi, it's Tran Bowie. I hope that you're enjoying the Roswell Music Fest. So they have opened for The Clash, The Replacements, and R.E.M. Some say any history of Atlanta music without them would be incomplete. I'm talking about the Night Porters, a huge part of the punk scene in the 80s. And joining me now, hello, are Andy Brown, who was part of that band, and then Lucy Theodora, who's now part of Andy's new band, Links Deluxe, used to be the Andy Brown troupe. Hi. I love I love the scene that you're in. Yeah, we're at uh, Big House Guitars, which is in Decatur. Um, we love it here. They're um, wonderful people. And if you're looking for vintage guitars, this is the place to be. So it's like a home away from home for us. Oh, I love that. And Lucy, I know that you have a super cool job. You work in one of the best record stores. Um, tell us about that. I work in Wax and Facts and uh, been there since 1976, was founded by Danny Beard and Harry DeMille. Um, and it's been in the same location at uh, 432 Moreland Avenue. And um, so uh, we have COVID hours. Y'all are welcome to come. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I would love to go see it. So yeah, we anything anybody could possibly want. So Awesome, awesome. I know. And you know what? We keep talking about with music now that old is new again. So that's like a great place to go and find all these different genres and music and maybe like rediscovering new things again. Yes, absolutely. So Andy, let me just start with you. Oh my goodness. So you guys were huge um, in the eighties and a big part of the Atlanta scene. What was that like? Uh, yeah, it was very strange. Being so young, it was a bit strange. Um, it was a wonderful time. It's just uh, you kind of like we were kind of like in a bubble. We we did a lot of touring up the East Coast with different bands, and um, you know it's just really exciting and and, uh, and eye opening. Yeah. And you know, being on the road with replacements for a while, it's kind of like um, rock and roll one hundred and one. Uh, learning from um, if you don't want to do everything to be a commercial success, you probably want to go replacement school, you know, so <laughs> that could work and for you or against you, but no, they were, they were really great people. And, um, and, and we had a lot of support in Atlanta that got us off the ground in Athens and stuff like that, different people. And so, yeah, I mean, you, you're a young kid and you're, you're in the major leagues. It was just uh, really, really kind of exciting. You know, how old were you? Uh, I think when the uh, big buzz started, maybe 17, 18. Oh, wow. wow. And, um, yeah, it's uh, been your head around a bit, you know? Yeah, no, because my son is only 15, so I can't even imagine. So what have you done since then? Well, um, so the night port is kind of split around 85. And then I was, um, I think I was working in Atlanta. I moved out to LA in 93. And I started in video production and I was on the road with Van Halen. We did work for the Stones and U2 and a lot of other big bands. And um, so that was kind of really neat. And um, I moved back to Atlanta like four years ago, I think. And I met Lucy um, almost three years ago. Uh, and she um, really kind of changed my perspective on a lot of things and really um, helped develop more of a, um, uh, openness to kind of music that maybe out of side my immediate influences and stuff. So I think that's great about different bringing different people into the band and 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 the chemistry involved in that. Um, there's Lucy on bass, Billy Fields on keyboards, who played in Follow for Now, who were an incredible band in the '90s in Atlanta. Greg D is uh, on guitar, and he's he's a very funny fellow. Brad Matson drums and percussion. He's probably one of the top drummers I've ever heard in my life. Uh, where's he from? Minnesota? Yeah. <laughs> so, so Lucy, tell me, Lucy, what is it like to be in this band? Tell us about the band. Like, what kind of music are, can we expect? Because we're actually going to get to hear you a little bit later on in the festival. Um, well, I guess it, it, there's no real genre to put it in. But I would say it's kind of an amalgamation of rock and soul influence with an edge, you know, um, like a 
we both love The Clash. It's a major influence and, and a band that we really like. But we also like a lot of other um, just genres of music. And uh, so one that we've both been listening to a lot lately is 70s Soul. And oh. um, yeah, some of those songs are just incredible. Just the way they're the the orchestration and the the even the lyrics, everything. They're just great songs. Yeah. So let's talk about the music industry because you've been a part of it for so long. Talk to me about how you think it has changed over the years. Do you think this is good or bad, especially now with the introduction of so much technology and access to music that we've never had before? Well, you wanna Well, I you wanna? You wanna? <laughs> I, I wanna. Ladies first. Yeah. I will politely interrupt uh, Lucy. Um, to me, and this is only my opinion, but like um, there was a certain humanity and a certain energy um, when we, or when I began to see live music and it was really kind of an excitement and it, it took you somewhere else. And, and, I, and that was really great. And, and I, all this like um, social media and, and all this stuff, it's, it's kind of what's going on right now. It's like the intimacy and the energy of seeing a live band is why people possibly go out to see them. And so you can play videos all day long and listen to Spotify, but you're not getting that emotional response of immediacy and energy. And so, yes, it's good for a lot of things, but I miss the humanity of, um, you know, uh, maybe live music uh, in a certain aspect that you don't get so much from social media, you know? Yes. That, no, you know? I agree. I like that word humanity. You're right. There's something about sitting in any kind of concert, whether it's big or small, and just being a part of that and actually seeing this person. And you appreciate, I feel like you appreciate artists more in person, you know, when you see them in person. So Lucy, for you, um, what do you think for young artists who are now starting because it's it is so easy for people to get their you know their name out there and perform for just about anybody because they can get online so what would you tell the young performers who are trying to get started you know good luck because it's very competitive it's just it's as competitive if not more now than it was before technology came along and changed the way things are done um, it's uh, now you have everybody capable of making their own music, their own sound. Like you have the band, you have the guy, the performer, the weekend. He started off in his own house in Canada and then later um, became a YouTube sensation. Now we have like four records of his for sale at Wax and Facts, but that's like the needle in the haystack. Yeah. So you almost have to want to do this because you love it. Right. You have to be willing to hit the road and you have to be willing to do all the work. You can't. I mean, it's like, but there's there's more work involved. And I think a lot of people think, OK, well, if I do this YouTube thing, I'll be great. I'll be you know, everybody will love me and I'll have a success. Well, you might do well on on Instagram or TikTok or something like that. But are you going to endure? And are you, Because I think the key is hitting the road and getting to meet people and having people listen to your music live so that they can get that kind of energy. You know, because anybody can play something on a keyboard and synthesizer in, in their home and, you know, think, okay, this is good. But right. <laughs> and maybe yeah, especially since we can edit and produce it now, you know, just from our phone. Exactly. I mean, like Billie Eilish, her brother was the one who produced all of her uh, songs, that first album, that skyrocketed her. And um, she did it, they did it in in like their bedroom at their house. So it's, it's just amazing what people can do. But I still think that finding, it's like any kind of artist, finding the, the one, it's the cream rises to the top. You have a big jar of milk, but the cream is up here, you know? And so it's just getting to the cream. <laughs> no, and that's a great perspective. So Andy, I want to wrap up with what is next? What can we expect next from you? I love that you are still in the music scene after all these years. Uh, so right now, um, given the situation, we're, we're in the studio, uh, uh, Penguin Lab, and we're writing, we're writing and recording a new album right now. Um, 
we have a lot of people helping out us um, and we're thankful for them. A lot of support um, is not the easiest time right now, but we're using that time effectively honing down certain songs, arranging and stuff like that. So I think it's in a way um, it's kind of reflective in the fact that you're, when you write a song, you might start with a raw idea, but then instead of uh, jumping and playing that live, maybe now it's a time to kind of make that, I don't want to use the word perfect in any sense, but the arrangements and the, um, the kind of style is refining and we're, we're practicing a lot. And, yeah, um, we have more time now, right. And it, it's kind of, we didn't practice for two months because of the given situation. When we did, it was like this passion again of like, wow, there's a fire. It was kind of neat to um, lose something for a while and then and then start over and you're like, wow, that, that's exciting again, you know? So in, in a way, maybe some things come in life, some bad things to, um, to turn into good things. We don't see it when it's happening, but you know. Yes, such a great perspective. And I, you know, we for one are grateful that you're back and recording. And then we are going to hear you a little bit later during this Razo Music Fest. So thank you so much for joining us and sitting down and talking with us and for all that you do. Well, we'd like to thank you guys very much. Roswell's got a special place in our heart, mine and Lucy's. Um, I, I grew up there somewhat, but we met there. And uh -huh. so we love you guys, uh, Roswell Magazine, and we love Roswell, the city itself. So thanks so much. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great night. All right, you too.